Faith is a word that gets thrown around actually all the time. Like keep the faith, walking in faith, having faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it says that faith is having the confidence in the things that we hope for and that the assurance that the Lord is working even though we cannot see it. But what is faith? In this video I'm going to discuss with you four steps that you need to take to put your faith into action. Faith over the years is actually such a broad topic of discussion and over the years I've looked at so many facets and articles about faith. In 1996 I shared a house with a Christian friend of mine, Galdebrain, who I now know for more than 25 years. She gave me this devotional booklet from Kenneth E. Hagen. In this devotional, over a four-day period, he covered the four principles of faith. And when I'd read it, I immediately told myself, but that's it. That makes completely sense to me. You see, I'm actually a very practical person. And I always like to put things into action. The four steps of faith outlined in this video are so simple. It actually sounds foolish. <laughs> but let me no longer keep you in suspense. Let me dive right into it. Before I start, I actually would like to read for you from the Bible. I want to read from Mark chapter 5, 24 to 34. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed a priest around him. And a woman was there who had suffered from bleeding for 12 years. She had borne much agony under the care of many physicians, and had spent all she had, but to no avail. Instead, her condition had grown worse. When a woman heard about Jesus, she came up through the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. For she kept on saying, If only I touch his garment, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and a sense in her body that she was healed of her affliction. At once Jesus was aware the power has gone out of him. Turn to the crowd, he said, Who touched my garment? His disciple answered, You can see the crowd is pressing in on you. And yet you asked who touched me. But he kept looking around to see who has done this. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, trembling in fear, as she told him the whole truth. Daughter, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free of your affliction. You see, someone must have told this woman about Jesus. She knew that he was actually healing people. Having this information, what was the first step in receiving healing for herself? The first thing she actually did was to say it. In verse 28, we can see that she kept on saying, If I could only touch his garment, I will be healed. People, words are extremely powerful. And a person has to be so careful what you say. The Bible said the tongue is like a double-edged sword. This woman could have actually spoke negative statements of actually speaking of a positive one and that would have she would have received what she said she would have she could have said but there wasn't any use that she was suffering so long and of course i've been to so many doctors she could have said but perhaps it's better if i die but instead of of speaking negatively she spoke positively but she said if only I can touch his garment, I will be healed. There was no negative thing in that sentence. It was straightforward positive with faith and belief. And it actually would come to pass to what she says. Another place I actually want to tell you about is in Proverbs 18 verse 24. It also says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. What does it mean? You can curse or bless a person just by simply speaking positively or negatively in their life. Therefore, the first step of writing your own ticket with God is to say it. The next action point is actually to do it. It wouldn't have come to pass or done this woman anything good ever if she said, If I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. She actually acted upon it. Our actions either put us over or defeat us. According to our actions, we either receive or we are kept from receiving. The woman with the issue of blood said it and she acted upon it. She touched his clothes. Guys, 
faith is an action. You have to take the first step and God will do the rest. You need to apply for that job and you need to go for an interview and trust God to do the rest. You need to do it. Take that first step. Now we're getting to the third step. Receive it. When she touched his garment, Jesus immediately felt that power has left him. He asked, who touched me? And his disciples actually replied, but there are so many people around you, Lord. But Jesus knew this touch was very different. For a healing power went out of him. He looked around and saw this woman. This is number three, guys. It's receive it. She received a healing. She felt it in her body and she was healed of this disease. In James chapter 1 verse 22, we read, Obey the word of God. If you hear only and do not act, you are only fooling yourself. Step number four is to tell it. We read in verse 33 that the woman with the issue of blood acknowledged what she has done. She told him all the truth. Jesus wants us to tell it so that others might also receive. Testimonies are so crucial, guys, that you tell your testimony what Jesus has done in your life because it encourages people to actually uh, to also try God and also to, to follow His way. And the first in writing our own ticket always is to say it. And a fourth step in this process is to tell it. There is a difference. At first, the woman said what she believed, and then she told what has happened. I was actually amazed when I read these four days of uh, little pieces of the small devotional, the small books, um, little pages, and I actually asked God, but is it also applying to other things in the Bible? And, and, and he actually just showed me. I mean, let's take the story of Moses in Exodus 20. I mean, let's take verse 13, where he said, But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Be strong and see how the Lord will save you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you will never see again. And what did he do? Do it. Then Moses put his hand out over the sea, and the Lord moved the sea all night by strong wind, so the waters divided. And what must receive it? In verse 22, we can read about receiving it. And the people of Israel went through the sea on dry land, and the water was closed on Egyptians, and they all drowned. And tell it, well, the story was passed on to generations, probably one of the biggest stories ever told in the Bible about it. Here is another example. It's the story of David Goliath. We can read it in 1 Samuel 17. Say it uh, is in verse 45 that David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and spears, but I come to you with the name of the Lord of all, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have stood against. That this day the God will give you into your mind, I will knock you down and cut off your head. This day I will give uh, the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines and the birds of the sky the wild animals of the earth, then all the earth may know that there is, a, uh, there is a God in Israel. That is actually what he said. Actually, quite a lot of things that he said was quite profound. Then do it. David put his hand into his bag, took out a stone, and threw it and hit the Philistine right in the forehead. And once the receiving part, the stone went into his forehead, and he saw that he fell down to the ground. And the talent actually in verse 54 you will read that actually David cut off the Philistines head and he was actually sending around to the country as a testimony, you know, that's what God has done for Israel. There are so many more examples of this in the, in the Bible, if I can just give you a few examples, like when Jesus put clay on a man's eyes and he could, uh, could be healed and he could see again. That we can read in John 9 verse 6. And then Jesus told him, uh, the other time was at the wedding where Jesus told the people to fill the jars with water and he turned the water into wine. That we read in John verse, uh, chapter 2. Then you've got also the story of Naaman 
who had leprosy. And Jesus told him to go and wash himself seven times in the river. In the Jordan, and he got healed. I mean, that is action. Seven times he had to go wash him in the river. And only the seventh time he got healed. And then also, there's another one story in the Bible where the Israelites had to walk seven times around Jericho. Blow in the walls and the walls of Jericho uh, came down. That we can read in Joshua 6. There's so many more examples. There's also about the disciples. They didn't catch fish all night. And then Jesus told them to load their nets on the other side of the boat. That And they catch so many fish that the nets were actually starting to tear. Well, we can read that in John verse 21. Then we got the breaking of bread, which is Matthew 4, uh, 14. And of course, another great one in the story of actually is where Peter got out of the boat, which is actually an action, and he walked on the water. And the Lord said he can come to down to you. You might say, okay, Yopi, that is biblical times. Is this still applicable today? Now, I actually would like to tell you my personal testimony. I was in a serious motorcycle accident on 25 May 2006 and I actually uh, completely broke my, two, my radius bones in my forearm and had to fit with the extra fixes and I spent in hospital for 13 times surgery just to reconstruct me, my arms and my legs again, oh, well mostly my arms. and. Uh, so I came out of hospital and then um, I was quite impressed. I was very worried. I, I couldn't move my fingers. And what has happened is that um, uh, they actually gave me a nurse also to help me to assist me at uh, a home because my wife, Chris, and I had to start working again. So uh, it was time that I'm out of leave, it's gone. There's no, there's no sick leave anymore. And uh, we need, and I need to um, actually start to get back to work. And then um, what has happened is that I got this, with this exit fix, I started to walk to the bus stop. But before that, I quickly need to tell you, I had a tremendous close, uh, wrote the Lord, I wrote Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life, What's My Purpose of My Life? And I actually wanted to make more sense of my life. And uh, I had a wonderful journey with him. And... Uh, reading this book and then I uh, really came close to the Lord. Um, I couldn't take him to work anymore. He had to start working. He had these uh, like antennas in his arms so he had to take uh, the bus. And then I started to walk. That one morning it's time for me to go back to work and I walked through this field which I actually show you as Velikta, but actually we especially back to film this for you. We are walking here and actually standing still. As I walk through this little field on my way to the bus stop because I could not drive to work. I've got this exo fixes my arm. Chris, I couldn't take me every time time to, to Cape Town where I worked. And then uh, as I walk through this felt, this little piece of land uh, on the day in the Lord's uh, I hear the Lord's voice say clearly, Yopi, do you trust me? I said, yes, Lord, of course, I trust you, it's not a problem. So I said, no, do you really trust me? And I said, yes, I do trust you. And then he said, okay, right, I want you to give 10% of what you earn to me in a form of tithing. And I was quiet. That's quite a tall order because we are serious in financial trouble. I've got used doctor bills. I need to pay us. I'm not sure if I'm not even going to get a job. And then uh, that voice stop and I start walking you know, on the way to the bus stop. And I asked myself, did I hear correctly? And uh, it was one of the, so the first thing I got onto the bus and everything and uh, I drove to work when I got to work everybody said hello welcome because I've been off for three months I haven't been uh, back to three to less more longer nearly six months and uh, then uh, when I rocked up to work it was a hello but the first thing I mean I switch on my laptop to work is to actually read up about tithing because I have to find out the way now how to get out of this situation as well um, he had 
you already know, Yapi is very inquisitive and wants to research everything and he tried to get out of this one. Because it's a lot of money uh, that I need to pay 10%, you know. And I started reading it and I started reading for Malachi 10, uh, what he says, the Lord actually made the promise that um, when you, uh, it's actually one of the only places in the Bible where God actually challenges us, say, if you do this, I will come through for you. And uh, he said, if you give me one tenth, I will overflow your barns uh, with, uh, with, with, with more than you can ever handle. Yes, like, and, uh, okay, fine, and then I have to go on the internet, what the internet says, there's so many things that people say it's positive about tithing, and so many says it's only applicable to the Old Testament, it's not applicable to today anymore, so I decided as well, you know what, the first thing God told me to actually entrust in Him, having faith in Him, I'm busy failing right now. I mean, I heard this so clear this, this morning when I walked there and Malachi was the first thing that actually, uh, Malachi 10 was the first chapter that I read about it. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I decided, okay, fine. I am going to uh, not even tell my wife. This is now only between me and God. She's going to freak if I tell my wife. I'm going to now give 10% away of my tithing. He eventually decided to do that and um, didn't tell me in the beginning, but uh, told me later on. And you know what? We know better than not to do what the Lord tells us to do and to trust in what the Lord tells us to do. So it was a Thursday, the Friday, I draw the cash. I went to an ATM and I draw the cash 10%. And on Sunday, I gave it to the same view church. I walked past there in the front where I got the message. I went to church and I actually dropped a 10% in the uh, uh, in the basket. So Monday came and I went back to work and uh, firstly my manager called me and said, listen Yopi, your hands are stuffed because you can't even move your fingers, you can't code. I was a computer programmer at the time. Uh, we're going to move you to another department in called the retail department. Uh, they've got point of sale development there. You're going to be part of the team and you're going to just uh, um, move it. So, um, Yapi was a programmer when he before his accident and then he had to go back to work, didn't know what he was going to do and he got put in a new department. Um, something that he's never done before. So I, I, was, I was actually first initially taken aback a bit uh, because I had quite huge Microsoft Invitation of Bistock server running, uh, which is actually like my domain, and uh, now I'm moving to something completely different. It felt for me like they are busy working me out. And then uh, what has happened is not long after that, actually going well, and not long after that, this department, specific department, was actually belonging into a retail department, an IT department. And the rumors came around, actually facts came around, that's been proved that this department is actually moving back to information technology. And some of the staff, they didn't like this idea as well. So they decided, no, they would don't want to move back to information technology department. They would like to stay in retail. So what has happened is that I'm sitting with probably one or two personnel in this department, and the others that left, they moved to other areas as well. And our human resource department couldn't replace those people fast enough. And then it's a training issue and everything as well. And the phone started to ring. And I picked up the phone. And it's got questions and queries and things that's got nothing to do with me. Instead of just computers, yes, suddenly it's about pumps and focal controllers and all these things that you find in petro automation petroleum industry. <coughs> and I started phoning around for help. And I started working late nights. And I started to find out to, to, to how these things work. Because I have to make this thing a success because otherwise I'm out of a job. And I worked long hours. Uh, I started six o'clock, wake up, the first bus leaves the next morning at four again. And I worked 
so many long hours to actually really understand it. And it's not just about the technical side was upside down. It was also about the, the, the with invoicings and the vendors and a lot of things supplying us. And I was personally thinking that they can produce, give us so much. Otherwise, we go out and tenders, we will actually get better uh, 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 vendors to actually do the job. And so me and my wife were sitting with paperwork late at night stacks, going through invoices and things, trying to understand on the administration side of the business as well. And um, we worked, me and Yopi, night upon night upon night to get this department started to make it work because we had to make it work. We didn't have a choice. And funny enough, you know, God never dropped him. But I was so cross with God. I told him, you know what? You told me how to tithe. I'm working my butt off. You're supposed to bless me. You are supposed to help me. I did this whole thing out of trust. Where are you in the situation? But I kept on tithing for the two or three months that this episode is going on. And I decided I am just going to trust God. And uh, as well, but I was cross. Uh, I, I was a happy chap because I didn't understand God's timing. You know, sometimes we want things to be done right now, and you expect a miracle to happen right now when you die. But you know, it's like uh, planting seeds. You don't see for the first month or two something grows, and afterwards you will see small leaves coming through. And uh, uh, that is basically uh, uh, what has happened. And God kept his hand on me. I didn't drop that part. I've learned so much as well. And then what has happened, time came about three, four, five months later. They told us we can appoint um, new personnel. You know, my manager came in for me and he said, listen, uh, we're going to appoint. I said, thank you. Then I can go to my normal job of point of sale. Uh, the point of sale um, uh, the software development side of it, the management thereof and then he told me listen, there's nobody actually understands what is happening in that department it's now moved to information technology services we would like you to actually, do you mind would you take up the opportunity to actually manage and run this department yeah, and I thought to finish this self, I was so cross with God, so much pressure. He said, no, we'll give you people. Don't worry about it, we'll give you people. And I accept the position. And guys, my salary jumped about three times there. God seemed to be the most wonderful people along my path uh, to come and help us to build this department to what it is today. Um, then um, Yopi built up uh, with the people that he's still with today. Bless their souls. They're very happy uh, with Yopi. Yopi's very happy with them. It's been like 12, 14 years later and they're still with him. Um, we were so blessed in that Yopi got put in this position, it worked out, he got a, quite a substantial salary increase and that is all because he, uh, we decided that yes, we must tithe because the Lord told us to, uh, to and he blessed us in abundance um, afterwards. And I was really grateful to God. You know, sometimes these things don't happen overnight, but this is what I'm trying to tell you. First of all, is to say it, you know, um, it is, uh, is to to actually uh, do what God has said in my life in this case and I said myself okay fine I'll commit I will tithe I said it do it I actually went to view church that day and I put my envelope in the basket and receive it yes it didn't come immediately it was a lot of pain and tears probably five six months later and the God has blessed me as well. And tell it, guys, that's what I'm doing with you. I've told this testimony to many people, but I actually want to tell you and inspire you that God is actions involved. God will come through you for you. Faith is an action, guys. That's a big thing. It doesn't normally just fall out of the sky. You physically have to say it. 
then you need to do something. Even Jesus knew it. Even Jesus knew this. He need, knew that he laid hands on people. He knew when the guy was blind that he put spit and sand or clay and made it to put on a guy's eyes as well. When Lazarus was dead, he actually took him by the hand and raised him from the dead. That's an action. There's always actions involved in faith. Faith is not just... Uh, believing just in your yes it is a crucial step there are four steps and most important guys when God comes through for you please please uh, tell the story about them give God the glory so that you can motivate and encourage other people to also tell the story or to motivate them to actually go over to action and do it that is a way where God comes through for you this is what I try to apply always from my life oh yes i'm human i also sometimes forget about my four steps but it's great to write these four steps down and see how god will come for you blessings and have faith